so today we are just going to run some errands. I'm going to show you a little bit of a tour around the farm. And today is 7-Eleven. So we have to start our day out with going to 7-Eleven for our free 7-Eleven Slurpees. So we are here and we are ready to go. Oh, dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. Guys, the wings. The wings are going to get you, Linda. Oh, um. Yeah, Mommy's going to get you one. Don't oh, worry. Oh, um. Mommy, I see one. Oh, they're pretty babies in there. They have ducks. I eat these. Oh, what are these? Phantoms. Oh, those are guineas. Do you see the bunnies? There. Yeah, it's there. Are they pretty? Ah. Oh. Can we get one, Mom? I think I'm so. Okay, got it, baby. Wait. After getting our Slurpees at 7-Eleven, we stopped by Atwoods to see all the pretty babies and to see if we needed to add any to our farm and of course get our free popcorn. That's my children's favorite part about Atwoods. I'm loving these dahlias. We got the bulbs from Costco and they make my heart happy every time I see them. They have been so beautiful. And of course, we ducky? had to bring one of those little babies home from Atwoods. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? This is still Garfield's favorite place to hang out. He thinks he's still that small kitten that used to crawl up there, but he's so cute. We allow it. All right, let's talk about this for a second. This is one of my favorite preparedness meals. So freeze-dried real cheese from Hoosier Farms and pasta. Your pasta of choice, whatever suits you, you make it just like you would a box of macaroni and cheese. Throw your pasta in there, a little bit of butter and milk, and mix in as much cheese or as little cheese as you would like. But there's so much control on this and how you like it, whether you want the organic or the non-organic or gluten-free pasta, whatever. It is exactly like a box of macaroni and cheese. Much, much more affordable for the real Thing. Yes, I'm going to continue buying those boxes here and there because it is awfully convenient. And this will last a very long time. Dasa, who are you? Emma. Yeah, you're oh, I love it. This is how the chickens keep themselves cool during this hot Texas summer. It's also how they keep themselves clean. They dust themselves off with this dirt and it makes them clean and cool. And this is where they're hanging out today. I don't think we've talked about this yet, so let's talk about it. One morning recently, it was raining very hard, and then I heard a huge boom, and the room lit up red, and I came out here, and <laughs> lightning struck my tree. It struck my beautiful evergreen tree, my cedar tree. Of all the trees here, it could have struck. Of course, it struck the most beautiful one, but it's it split it right in two so it was quite the noise this poor beautiful tree we talked about taking it down but I think for now we're going to leave it and see if maybe it regrows I've seen that happen on some of these trees I don't know but it smells like fresh cedar out here this morning <laughs> you can smell it and when it first happened it was actually quite warm to touch no fires probably because of all the rain we've been having but yeah, look at this poor tree split right down the middle. It's just such a shame, but this wood is beautiful. If we do take it down, I'm going to be sure to mill this wood. It's so smooth and beautiful. I love it. On to the garden to see what's happening. I am deadheading these marigolds. That's where you pull off the dead heads and you bury them. They're full of seeds to grow some more marigolds. You also can save them. I like to make sure they're fully dried out and throw them in a mason jar and label them for next year. Also digging up the last of those potatoes. 
these taste so different than a store. Mr. Turk in coming over to check out what I'm doing. They have not bothered my garden at all. So knock on wood. Look at our grapes. We are so excited about this. This is the first year we've had grapes. I planted these last year and now this year they are just full of all the grapes. Looks like they're going to be green grapes. It said mixed variety when I bought it so I wasn't sure but I think they're going to be green and they're doing so well. My petunias are starting to die off a little bit in this extreme heat. My garden bed, I have some bean plants. I have some calendula down here. I have all the sunflowers sprinkled in, more marigolds. I have radishes coming up and some cosmos and more radishes, another sunflower. Then over here, I'm super excited about this. This is a little bit of rhubarb coming up. This will be my first time with rhubarb. It is a perennial. And everywhere you see these sticks, this is where I've planted more rhubarb and asparagus. Over here in the main garden, I've planted some late season cantaloupe there and over there. I'm not sure if that will fruit in time, but it's a little bit of an experiment. We'll see what happens. Here are some more bean plants. They're doing okay. Then we have all the okra as per the usual. It's something that is just so easy to grow in Texas. It does really well in the hot heat. However, we have had the most unusual year. I don't have my scissors, so we're just going to twist this off. It has been an unusual year. We've had so much summer rain. I've battled some different bacteria and funguses with the humidity and all of the heat. Our watermelons are not fully developed yet. Last year this time we had so many watermelons. I have all of the watermelon plants. They seem healthy. They're growing. But over here I have a Howden pumpkin plant. It's those big orange pumpkins. You can see where it's struggling with brown spot from the humidity and the heat. It will be okay. It's all going to be okay. It'll keep on growing, but it's something that has affected a lot of my plants this year. Over here, the acorn squash is doing great. I have all the little baby acorn squashes. Really excited about that. I love acorn squash. They'll be ready just in time for fall or a good solid harvest by the time fall comes along. Somewhere over here, I know I have several Howden pumpkins. There's one growing right there. Hopefully it keeps. I've had a couple fall off with all of just this bacteria. Like I said, it just mildewed and fell off. But it seems to be doing okay now. Every time one of these squash plants gets big, I throw it over the trellis. See, here's one that has become rotten. And you want to pull those off and throw them out because pests, are attracted to the rotten things and I don't want any more pests than I already have over here so I'm gonna throw that away underneath all of these leaves somewhere I have a almost ready acorn squash it'll be the first acorn squash of the season so I'm excited about that there it is yay and these are so easy to keep throughout the winter they really just keep well in a cool room then I feel like this is the year of the squash. <laughs> the squash has done so well this year. We've already eaten lots of our butternut squash. Here's some hanging here that's almost ripe, but not quite. You can tell because it turns that peachy orange color and that stem will go completely brown. And then we have all of the little baby ones on here. Just so much butternut squash. I'm so thankful. It's like every year there's just one plant that seems to be the plant that does really well. And this year, it's butternut squash. Definitely not watermelon like last year. <laughs> Although I'm still rooting for that watermelon to pull through. We have a long, hot summer still ahead of us. So hopefully it does. I do find that these trellises are really helpful with the squash. Like I said, when a squash vine gets big, I throw it over this trellis and it really helps the air flow. So it fights and counters that bacteria that I'm seeing in like that Howden pumpkin plant on the ground. Um, I need my third trellis over there to throw that up over a trellis too. When there's more air flow, there's just less likely for those damp leaves to contract anything. Ripen a bit more pumpkin, that's our squash. Yeah, squash, squash. Ooh, more squash. A sweet little helper in a princess dress and rain boots. Over here is my lemon tree. It is pulled through. It pulled through last winter. It's still here. It's not really doing much, but it's alive. 
I'm really excited about these great plants. I had it on my list to buy more grape vines this year, but I have yet to do it. So hopefully I can add to this trellis before this season ends. With all of this rain, the pond is full and the fish are happy. I feel like we've just had so much abnormal rain this summer. I can't emphasize that enough. It's way more than we usually get. And while I usually like rain, I'm kind of ready for that hot sun to dry out some of these plants and to get rid of the humidity. I hate the humidity. <laughs> I can stand the heat. Then, if you remember, I think it was in the last garden tour I gave. It's probably been a month to six weeks ago. I'll link that below if you're interested in that. I went and dug up about 50 squash plants from this cow field that my cows planted for me. And then, about two weeks later, all of these squash plants came up. So I gave up on digging them up and transporting them to my garden for my tender love and care. Um, I'm just letting them do their thing. So we have so many different kinds of squashes growing in the cow field. And I'm very excited to see what comes of that. And of course, my Pyrenees are guarding all of the animals like good dogs. They're, they're just fantastic. They're such beautiful dogs. Then there's Miss Mittens, my daughter's cat. She's our oldest cat on our farm. She just turned six and she is very loved. I have all of the potted things around. The petunias have died out of here, but this plant seems to be holding its own. And yeah, definitely little dead petunia or struggling petunia <laughs> over here i have plants that my church did not want anymore they used them for an event and then they asked me if i wanted them and yes i do most of these are palms and lilies so it's on my list to plant these around my pond the purple petunias over here seem to be holding their own, but they have faded. As these are flooded, all of that rain. I'm telling you, I bought these big pots at Aldi for $13. Several, I think two years back actually. And they're fantastic for the size, $13, right? But there's no holes at the bottom. And for some reason I thought I that wouldn't matter. Um, it does, it does matter. We get so much rain that it matters. <laughs> so all my little plants are drowning. My little rosemary over here, hopefully it perks back up. We'll see, I need to drill some holes in the bottom. I ran inside to get dinner started and I thought I would share this with you too. These are our butternut squashes and our potatoes. I'm gonna put these on a pan and roast them in the oven. And guys, this is fantastic. It is so worth growing your own food. I'm gonna make this with some pork chops and I'm gonna feed my family and I'm gonna call it a night. Until next time, guys, bye. Shining bright like a shadow shine, very high like the stars. There's a truth.